Your Excellency, thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Uh, I just have a couple of questions for you. The first one being that uh, here at St. Stanislaus and around the world, the traditional Latin Mass seems to be experiencing a revival. Um, to what do you attribute this revival? And why do you think it's so appealing to young people? The revival of the traditional Mass is for me a demonstration of the fact that uh, truth and beauty is itself attracting. Mm -hmm. It is self-revealing. And so the traditional liturgy is so filled and imbued with the faith, with the richness of faith and the clarity of faith, of the Catholic faith, and at the same time expresses a deep respect and reverence, an attitude of reverence, of sacredness, of sublimity during the liturgy, the worship. So, and this is the traditional liturgy, these objective uh, qualities of truth and sacredness and beauty, uh, they are an expression of the entire uh, Catholic generations which preceded us, uh, beginning with the Apostles. <laughs> so the spirit of prayer, of faith of the Apostles is uh, there expressing itself in the traditional liturgy in a very clear manner and more expressively uh, than in the uh, new the reformed liturgy of the Mass. Because the traditional liturgy in some way accumulated all the generations starting with the Apostles, with the Holy Fathers of the Church, and with so many saints during 2,000 years. So it was an um, expression of prayer and of worship guided by the Holy Spirit, by the saints, uh, which was proven through two millennia uh, to be a very valid, a very um, efficient form of prayer, which so many countless generations of saints uh, experienced. Uh, they lived this liturgy, and this liturgy gave them uh, strength and nourished their Christian life, their apostolate, and so, and for these reasons, objective reasons of these values and qualities of the traditional liturgy, it is, to my opinion, an evidence that this attracts especially young people, because young people are seeking ultimately the truth. Mm -hmm. They are seeing in the world of today, in the uh, various uh, means of culture of today, of, of television, of internet, and so on, a lack of truth, a lack of beauty. And uh, so they are longing, they are yearning uh, in their hearts and their soul to experience this truth and this beauty which comes from God and gives uh, people in, the, in their heart, in their soul, real freedom and peace and desire to, to love God, to worship God in this beautiful manner. Yes, thank you. Um, you. You've spoken of a great crisis in the church today. Do you think that part of that crisis is as a result of many people in the church drifting further away from the traditional liturgy? Yes, it is, of course, evidently, there's this, the crisis of faith and, and morals in the Church is connected with the crisis of liturgy. 
it is known uh, an axiom of the first centuries of the church and which the church always observed this is the following uh, in latin lex credendi lex orandi it means the law of faith of truth has to be be reflected lived and realized in the law of prayer of the liturgy it is inseparable connected so the manner you believe in this manner you have to worship to interiorly but also exteriorly with your body with the gestures with all the uh, elements of a visible worship of God and a public worship of God so the true faith the integrity of faith of the Catholic faith the clarity of faith demands uh, an expression uh, in your worship that is connected to this faith and revealing this faith so this is one and also the law of life of the morals is connected to faith and to liturgy these three aspects we cannot divide and so it is uh, when it started the in the, the the catholic faith be less clear in the past uh, 50 years in some in the church life or in some way ambiguous and we are we were witnessed uh, the spreading of errors in the life of the church and even heresies uh, this reflected also in the manner as the liturgy was celebrated but at the same time uh, the liturgy was reformed was made the liturgy of the holy mass in some aspects less clearer uh, according um, in in relationship to the truth especially mm -hmm. the truth of the real presence of christ in the eucharist uh, in relationship to the truth that the holy mass is essentially in the first place the sacramental celebration of the sacrifice of christ on the cross yes and, uh, and so this was made these aspects of our catholic faith appear in the new liturgy in the reformed liturgy less expressed right. and have some even even um, lack of clarity of integrity in some points and this reformed liturgy which uh, these uh, deficient elements uh, in relationship to express uh, more clearly the truth for the of the sacrificial character of the mass and of the real presence of the transubstantiation uh, so this manner of celebrating mass in the in the new reformed liturgy by time so uh, has also a an influence back to the truth to your uh, believing Mm -hmm. what you are believing so when you are behaving and with your gestures and so on during holy mass in a manner which is expressing less the the sacredness the supernatural the sublime the sublimity of god the sacredness and so on so by time uh, it will influence your believing so this is evident yes. and the other aspect why why young people uh, are um, in some way fall in love with the traditional liturgy uh, because uh, young people they desire to know uh, the the entire truth they are not content with half truth uh, which today the world 
is presenting them all, always and everywhere they are looking, they are half truths or even anti truth and they are deceived by the modern world, the young people. Yes. And in the in the in their hearts they they know and they desire to know the full truth. Mm -hmm. So in some way they say, please tell me the the whole truth. Please yeah. do not hide something. Right. Please so they are take, uh, saying to the church, please tell us the whole truth of, of the thing. Yes. <coughs> Do not hide something in the faith, in the liturgy. Yeah. And so young people are by nature inclined to, in some way, to heroism. They want heroic things and uh, the full truth. Mm -hmm. In this time of moral confusion in the church and in society, what would be your advice to young people who are trying to remain faithful Catholics? My advice would be to them to study bang, uh, to, to study good the catechism, which they, they have or they can find good catechisms, especially here in the United States is the famous Baltimore, Catechism, mm -hmm. <laughs> but also the Catechism of the Catholic Church is known, or to study good apologetic uh, books which are available also. So, in any case, I, I suggest them, I advise them to deepen the knowledge of the Catholic faith. Because this is the, the um, you more the, the more you know the Catholic faith, the more you love the Catholic faith. Yeah. The more you know the Catholic faith, the more you are uh, strong in some way. You become uh, immovable. You are you are strong in your convictions, yeah. and for this you will be ready also to give your life. You will not give your life for half truth mm -hmm. you will not give your life for ambiguity for an expression which is ambiguous you will give your life for the truth and christ is the truth in his person and in his teaching which is which the church transmitted us in all its beauty and integrity and clarity uh, throughout uh, 2000 years so this is my first um, advice to study good, personally, uh, the Catholic faith in good catechisms. Second, uh, to form groups of, of study of Catholic faith, the young people, and to deepen there, and to, um, to choose a good Catholic priest who is a man of prayer, a man of the Church, a man of faith, and who has good knowledge to be their counselor to guide them spiritually and theologically. So, and then, of course, uh, my other advice, it is very important not only to know the faith, it is not sufficient. We have to live the faith. What you have known and studied, you have to live in your personal life through the uh, very um, assiduous and uh, life of the sacraments. This is the most essential expression of our Christian life, to live with the sacraments, holy confession, holy uh, communion, participate regularly in the Holy Mass, in prayer. So the first is to deepen the knowledge of faith, the apologetics, then to live this in your life, in the sacraments, to pray, and uh, then also uh, to make some apostolate. I mm -hmm. would suggest young people to spread the beauty of the Catholic faith to other young people. Wonderful. 
Uh, my last question, speaking of books, do you have a particular book recommendation for our audience? Well, I mentioned already the Catechism of Baltimore, the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Um, they are uh, today available also in the internet and so, and good apologetic uh, tools. Uh, I would also recommend to, to read the works of Chesterton, for okay. example, which are very up-to-date. Mm -hmm and apologetics. I would recommend also to read the books or to hear the uh, the talks of Archbishop Fulton Sheen, an American bishop, yeah. who is a servant of God, as example. And then mm -hmm. also I would recommend to, to read the biographies of saints, of famous saints, the biography of martyrs, of old times and of our modern times, the biography of the confessors of faith, uh, of important persons uh, who uh, defended our faith, who loved our faith in the history. For example, Thomas More, it's very, for me, up to date, his mm -hmm. example of life. And so, uh, this would be uh, a help for the young people to nourish their convictions okay. and to be courageous. This I wish to young people, please be courageous. They need, they need more courage. Be courageous. Be not afraid to say you are a Christian. Be not afraid to say I am a Catholic. Well, then I, am a, I want to be a true Catholic, no, not a half Catholic or a Catholic, 30% Catholic. No. Mm -hmm. You have to desire to be 100% Catholic. This is yes. the face of the Apostles, of all the saints. Uh, of course, we are not yet saints, but we have to, to have the desire to be these, to imitate. And so, don't forget that you are a member of the militant church. We are uh, doing a battle, a spiritual battle against uh, Satan, against sin, against error, against heresies, and so on. And this is a very uh, holy battle, because God gave us this, and all our existence here on earth is a holy battle for, for the Lord. And so be good soldiers of Christ. This is your task. Uh, be good soldiers of Christ, be humble at the same time, and love Christ, and make Christ live in your hearts. And then, for the young people also, pray always every day uh, to the Holy Spirit that He may uh, illuminate you which uh, vocation in your life you have, mm. which way of life you have to choose. And so, the family life or to be consecrated to God. Ultimately, it, this is, uh, there are two ways. To be in the family, to found a family. This is the domestic church. It's a beautiful vocation for the majority of young people to really to find a domestic church, to be a Catholic family. This is the most beautiful contribution also today in our crisis. And then also the other vocation, the way of to be consecrated to God entirely, to promote the, the truth, the faith, in this form of consecration as a priest, as a religious, or as a dedicated and uh, consecrated person uh, in the world, so we have these basic two ways, domestic church, marriage, family, it's a beautiful vocation which God gave us, and to be consecrated to Christ totally. These two ways are belong together. They, uh, uh, they are together uh, edifying the church. So uh, they are 
depending one from other. And so I wish to the uh, to you, the young people, to have a burning, fervent heart to 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 love Christ, who is the truth, who is our way, and He only gives us true life. And so, and ultimately, not forget that in all our battle, in all our crisis, Christ is the winner, always. Uh, this beautiful song, this Catholic identity song, you know, is Christus vincit, Christus regnat, Christus imperat. It means Christ is the winner, always. Christ is our king only and Christ rules us. And so this I wish for all the young people to be good soldiers and to believe and to act that we are with Christ already. When we are with Christ, we are the winners. And so be good soldiers of Christ. I love that message. Thank you, Your Excellency. We really appreciate you You're being welcome. here today. Thank you.